Hey everyone, this is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, we have Verizon Home Internet now, and they have a new box. It just came out with it really last month, uh, June of 2022. So in the black box, I have my original Verizon Home Internet 5G gateway. It's this little cube. I often refer to it as a cube. And now this new one is this guy. Well, hold on, maybe this one. No. Yeah, this one is the new one, uh, if you can't tell. <laughs> so, it might not look like they're different, but the insides are completely different. But surprisingly, they have the exact same outer case, which uh, I guess I'm not familiar with a lot of uh, companies doing that. But on the bottom of this one, the um, the SKUI, so the, you know, the name of this device, it starts with ARC, or the ARC. And the older one starts with A S K. All right, so on the bottom of them, again, they look very similar. They have the same power port and two Ethernet ports right beside them. And then right underneath those, there is a little flap. This is a silicone or rubber flap. So on this one, the older one, the ASCII, you can see it has a little uh, screw cover um, with the screw in it. And that's for the SIM card. Then it has a USB-C port, and then it has a um, moisture monitor, you know, little you know, red lines that show that if it got wet. On this one, you can see the USB-C port, and then next is a hole there, so it looks like they saved the money on the moisture meter and don't have it. And then there is no SIM card slot there, and that's because this new ARC one uses a eSIM, which means... There is no physical card. It's basically um, just a digital SIM card in um, the software itself. So inside they're very different because there are two different brands that actually make the internal guts of them. And there's a couple things that are very important with the differences. And probably the number one key difference is that this newer one has U.FL connectors for the cellular antenna ports. So this has, you know, cellular antennas inside this cube, and they're connected to the board with a type of port that is um, very common. I've done a lot of videos on the T-Mobile home internet that has those same ports on their gateways. And this, even though it's not super easy, allows you to put an external antenna. It'd be great if they gave us ports on the devices themselves on the backside. They don't. But on this one, with the um, the pin types that they have for connecting antennas, it's not easy to add an external antenna on the old one. On this new one, now we can take this apart and we can add antennas. And that might be a huge benefit for people that have trouble getting a strong signal inside their house or if they have something like you know, metal roof, metal siding, and they really get poor reception inside the house, but they get good reception outside the house or at the roof line or whatnot. So let me also log in here. I'm going to show you a couple of the software differences that are also fairly significant compared to the older ASCII one. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but on startup, it has a fairly loud fan noise. It only goes for about 5 or 10 seconds. This one has a fan as well but you pretty much never notice it or hear it. This one appears to have a stronger fan, and I'm not sure if it's bigger. I know that one's a really tiny fan in there, but we'll take this one apart and we'll, we'll get to the, uh, the bottom of it. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that the address for the gateway is now no longer a 192.168.12.1. Instead, it ends in 1.1, which is actually the more typical one. All right, so once you go to that website, you type in your password, you hit login, and you can see actually just fat fingered my login a second ago. But that password is again on the bottom of your device. There, it will say this one says uh, just password, not not the Wi-Fi password, but just the regular password. That's how you log in, and then here. You can see these are the basic settings, so there's um, just some very simple ones for changing the um, SSID name as well as to enable or disable the um, 
the different bands, the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz bands. Uh, you can also change security and, um, you know, if you want to broadcast or not broadcast the, um, the SSID. And then it has an option for a guest network. Um, this is kind of unique and new. This is the IoT, so that's Internet of Things Network. And this is really about um, security. And so what they really tell you to do, if you have smart switches and smart thermostats and, you know, webcams and all this other kind of stuff that is considered Internet of Things, it's really recommended you put them on a different network from your computers and other stuff. And that is to separate them in case they get hacked. So if they get hacked, um, and there's some kind of uh, vulnerability with them that it gives a hacker access to your network. You keep them contained in the Internet of Things space and not to uh, your actual computers. I don't do that, but this is kind of neat that they have it set up as a option that's easy to click on and click off. So it actually gives you, um, you know, this actually gives you multiple networks. Now you have a primary, a guest, and IoT all easy to uh, manage inside of here. Then it shows you your devices. Right now I only have just my one desktop hooked up by Ethernet and I can turn it on and off till it, it doesn't get to uh, connect to it or whatnot. And then the system there's not a whole lot here. This one is not activated just yet so I'm actually not live um, with it. Alright so here you actually get a little bit of information about how good of the signal it is. It doesn't tell you what band you're on which is obviously very important actually it's not just your signal strength or signal power but at least you get it I'm down in my basement so I get 0 5g and I don't get a good 4g LTE signal either but that's fine I'm just down here for the video I will put it up actually on a third floor loft where I get the best signal but now you can actually maybe do some tuning with this where you can rotate it and see like I'll just rotate it you know about 180 We'll refresh this and see, oh, look, my signal got worse, right? So, you know, that's uh, something that you can do here and move this guy around in your house and try to find the better signal. All right, so the more interesting space is the advanced tab, of course, and this is where you can do some more things. Again, the, um, the Wi-Fi networks are there, but then there's a the radio management one. So this one's kind of neat because this one um, tells you, you know, what channels are out there and which ones you're on. And then you can also get, you can change the channel manually if you want to, uh, which can be good. As well as you can disable it here. This is the same, I'm almost positive this is the same setting as if you were to go to the primary side and disable it. It just gives you another place uh, to disable it. But if you do the down arrow, you get also the compatibility or legacy mode and this is good if you need um, you know to make sure that your device is compatible with all of your uh, devices out there you might have to change that setting there and then also if you intentionally want to dumb down the Wi-Fi power you can do that here so these are um, some of these settings are kind of in the the ASCII one and some of them are not but it's it's kind of nice that they have them laid out here Right, when you click the settings button, it also gives you two other ones out there um, that you can tell it to keep your channel anytime it reboots. And the other one is to um, DFS channels during channel. To be honest with you, I don't even know what the DFS channels are, but uh, if you do, then you might want to check or uncheck that box. All right, so the next place that I think this one has some different settings than the other one is in the firewall. Now it breaks up the IPv4 and IPv6 settings. So you can do different firewall settings for those different types of protocols there. Uh, you get the DMZ host. And again, what's kind of interesting about this one is that it breaks it up between the IPv4 and IPv6. So that's um, a unique uh, setting there. And then they give you IPv6 pinholes. Um, and then the, the other one has the port forwarding ones as well. But this one has... I believe some more settings here than the other one there. All right, if we go into the network settings here, uh, we get this ARP table, we get a DNS server, which 
Um, you know, we know what that one is on here, but also now the new one is a dynamic DNS. So this is one that I don't believe the ASCII has, and this allows you to um, add uh, one of your own D DDNS um, services out there. All right, so the other important place here is under network connection. This is a kind of a hard to find setting in some ways if you weren't paying attention to this. But in here now, if you either click here on the network home office or the edit button, it will bring you to this page where you have some more settings for um, this home network. So this is where you would want to go in here to your settings. And now you can change things like your MTU uh, packet size. Um, you can change the uh, IP address of this guy, the subnet. You can change the DHCP server as well as disable it if you need to or want to. All right, so mine just came out of the box, and so it came with the firmware that was installed. But I believe there's a firmware update that once I connect this to the cellular network and get it working, it will update, and I think they add the IP pass-through uh, checkbox uh, right on this page All right, and just a note on that IP pass-through on the ASCII one when I do that especially with my ASUS AI mesh system it actually drops internet connection on the ASUS until I reboot um, the gateway there and that seems like that's a bug with their software so I actually turned off IP pass-through and I just used the DMZ on there but I think that problem might be fixed here with this um, this newer arc one and if it doesn't uh, I did see another hint there that with ASUS specifically the AI protection which is like ASUS's built-in um, you know firewall and security stuff if you disable that that will fix that problem where you lose internet connectivity when it's in IP pass-through mode I'm not exactly sure what what's happening there but something is tripping that off Okay, the other interesting setting on this arc is the LAN port. So you can actually, by default, they're set to auto, meaning once they're connected, they'll figure out what to do. But you can actually force them into um, a specific speed and half duplex or full duplex. Um, I don't have a personal need for that, but um, you might or you might want to, uh, to do that. So that's something that this box has that the other one does not have. And then the other thing that it has is a lot of diagnostic and monitoring services here that you can look at. I don't have a lot because I just got this out of the box, so you're not seeing anything here. But there are some diagnostics that you can run between um, pings and system logging. Everything from the system, security log, an advanced log. Um, firewall log, WAN log, and um, a, a LAN DHCP log. And all of these have an options button for you where you can determine how long of a viewing you want to do. But then some of them also additionally have a settings um, tab that you can uh, define what type of events you're going to accept into this log. So lots of different um, settings there. All right, so there's lots more settings in there. I won't go through them all, but there is a user guide that touches uh, on several of these settings. So I will put that link in the video description down below. Okay, so that's a couple of the key differences here. I'm going to make lots more videos here on this. You know, the next ones I want to talk about are external antennas. And specifically on this one, there's eight different ports in there for external antennas. And I don't think anyone wants to buy two 4x4s or... Uh, four two by two antennas um, to get it to work so figuring out which ports to use is the best but even before I do that I also want to verify my speed difference I want to find out does this give me any better or worse speed compared to the old ask one all right if there's something I didn't cover on here feel free to put a comment down below obviously like the video if it was um, helpful to you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you want to see more content they will be coming out in the coming days and coming weeks with more content here for you guys about home internet.